erstellen.
Other issues raised by the public were not addressed by the PNZ Commission in their approval of the draft ordinance recommended by County Commission for County Commission consideration. Uh, number one, section one deals with issues related to the scope, purpose, and findings of the citizens' ordinance. These sections have little substantive bearing on the validity of the draft recommended by the PNZ Commission. Just remember, these are not my comments. These are not the commission's comments. These are the comments from the director of planning and zoning for Sandoval County. Section four requires a special use rezoning for oil and gas activities. This issue was considered and rejected when proposed uh, SOP drafts by the staff were rejected. Section five and six have several preemptive issues that are not consistent with instructions given to the PNZ Commission and staff by the County Commission regarding avoidance of preempted issues. So the ordinance that's been put forth by the PNZ Commission represents over a year and a half of effort with input from the public industry, experts, regulatory agencies, as well as the planning and zoning staff. I would like to personally acknowledge everyone's contribution to this process. The public's passion has come through, and this board acknowledges that passion and your input. Unfortunately for me, and I cannot ex speak for the entire board, uh, but I personally have experienced some negative uh, in, uh, input and uh, feedback, which I realize kind of comes with the job, but nevertheless, it's not really needed. I also want to summarize and provide some clarity regarding public input and how we got to where we are today. So early on in the process, the public as well as this commission recognized that we did not have an ordinance re regarding oil and gas in San Diego County. The process started with a lot of public hearings, workshops, testimony, input. Bottom line, everyone would agree, I would think, that the process of law has allowed for everyone to participate. What needs to be pointed out is how the process evolved from one of a conditional use ordinance to one of a special use ordinance to finally one of a permissive use ordinance. Interestingly along the way, and please don't interrupt me, interesting along the way is that this board and the public have agreed on each instance. Then finally, when the public participation yielded a draft ordinance, what was brought forth was previously rejected special use format, which the public itself rejected. In fact, the document was basically one which the PNC Commission had abandoned when it was argued by the public that they wanted an ordinance, not an administrative procedure. I have done so, I, I, I have done so previously and will acknowledge again now the hard work put in with this endeavor by our board of planning and zoning commissioners slash volunteers. I mean, these folks don't get paid to do what they do. Uh, the fact that they would come here and meet for hours on end to satisfy uh, their public service to you, the citizens of Sandoval County, I think should be commended. I've heard very little, though, if any positive comments or appreciation from the public regarding these folks' efforts. With the current ordinance that the PNZ Board has put forth, I want to commend them for taking the time and in fact, in excess of 10 hours, just refining the language, which I want to note that they unanimously agreed to. Given the challenge of putting forth an ordinance pertaining to oil and gas operations in Sandoval County has required that a balance be struck between those multiple regulatory layers, the ability of the county to administer the ordinance that passes, and apply countywide requirements of the industry that protect the citizens and resources of Sandoval County. This overarching concept was aptly described by our newest commissioner, Dr. James Holden Rose, when he issued a letter to Director Springfield stating that, and I quote, the Sandoval County Oil and Gas Ordinance should, not, should only address those items that are not presently covered by federal and state regulations. I also need to share with you the vision of this board. There has been a change here at Sandoval County that reflects the current makeup of the board and the top executives here. We are pro-business, we are pro-economic development, and we support in our purposeful and our intent when it comes to job creation. While we are focused on expanding the business and in turn the tax base in Sandoval County, we are also respectful of our duty in answering the citizens' call for an oil and gas ordinance, especially when you consider that the county currently has and has had for decades oil and gas producing wells without any county ordinance. 
It is very well documented and has been discussed many times. New Mexico's economic dependence on the oil and gas industry. So rolling out those statistics for you one more time, I don't just I just don't think it's necessary. But it is worth noting how this essential industry touches every facet of yours and my life. I am proud to share with you that your own county government is taking steps to reduce dependence on fossil fuels. You may not know about this. I don't think it's ever been discussed. But we are, via our own energy efficiency initiative, once completed, all the county's facilities and offices will be more energy efficient as we modernize all our equipment and add a significant dose of solar energy component to our operations, allowing us to effectively lock in our energy costs for a period of approximately the next 15 to 20 years. This accomplishes two things that we practically eliminate the rising rates of electrical power and we reduce our operational costs, saving you, the San Juan County taxpayers, money in the process. Again, after nearly two years of public testimony, work sessions, expert advice, we have before us an oil and gas ordinance that's the culmination of these efforts to consider this evening. As is indicated in its title on our website, the Planning and Zoning Oil and Gas Draft of September 2017, was thoughtfully crafted over the course of two months and then passed by the PNC Commission for your consideration. Our direction was for the Planning and Zoning and Department and Commission to take a balanced approach, <coughs> consider public input as well as sought input from industry experts to deliver an ordinance that addresses these limited areas. One, setback requirements to protect homeowners, our children's schools and playgrounds, and interaction with existing businesses. Two, noise. Three, emergency response. Four, road plans, both planned use and how to mitigate future impacts. Lighting and visual concerns as well. You see in front of you this evening the statutes outlined uh, in the ordinance passed uh, by PNZ. These are just a sampling of the statutes that um, regulates the oil and gas industry. And to comply with those regulations would involve another volumes, at least four or five, the same size as those. These are only the state statutes, mind you, that the state of New Mexico imposes on the oil and gas industry. They're represented by these volumes here. Um, they do not include the federal statutes that uh, we couldn't get here in time for this meeting tonight. Some of you may also recall the four-page document provided to us at the May work session which outlined every concern expressed by citizens and the agency responsible for regulation. The ordinance before you effectively addresses all the issues, the county concerns, and provides regulatory certainty for both industry and our community members, both of whom have waited long enough for the county to take action. And that's my statement.